The year was 1897, and a shipwreck was found at sea in Whitby, England. Local police left to investigate in the heavy rain, but found no survivors inside. They find the captain's diary with a warning that there is great danger to humanity, and describe how it all began four weeks ago. At a harbor in Varna, Bulgaria, Captain Elliot and his nephew Toby board the Demeter, which will soon depart for England. They needed more people to support their crew, so Elliot and his teammate Wojcik picked a few from the long line. Clemens also lined up and explained that he was a Cambridge-educated doctor. But Wojcik refused because he needed strength, not brains. Clemens always came to port to witness the crew piling up a mysterious pile of boxes, as the workers carrying them refused to stay longer as the sun was approaching, while the team was moving the crates. One of them noticed that a box had a dragon symbol on it, which caused him to lose his fear. The barrel slid and nearly crushed Toby, but Clemens reacted quickly and knocked him out of the way just in time. The man immediately left, saying that the dragon symbol was a bad omen and that he would not travel with it. Elliot was so grateful to Clemens that Wojcik eventually decided to hire him. The crew finished loading the crates and climbed aboard, not noticing that one of the crates had spilled soil. When everyone was ready, the ship finally took off for England. Toby took Clemens on a boat tour, showing him his livestock and adorable dog. He also taught her to knock on wood when she got stuck, as it could be heard from the bunk bed. In the evening, while the crew were singing and dancing together, Elliot informed Wojcik that when they arrived in London he would retire to be with his family, and so Wojcik would be the new captain. Meanwhile, one of the crates starts to shake, and something mysterious moves inside. Afterwards, the group had dinner together and discussed what they would do with their money. Clemens says he wants to understand the world. Suddenly the dog started barking, and Toby ran over to check on the animal, howling in fear. This worried Toby, but Clemens assured them that the animals were only worried because they sensed an approaching storm. They started covering the cages with tarpaulins, but soon a strong wave hit the boat and threw a crate into the hold. While Toby went to tell the others, Clemens checked the cargo hold and found an open crate with a pile of dirt falling out of it. Suddenly, something moved on the ground, turned out to be a woman who was barely breathing. Clemens immediately took her to a room for care and a blood transfusion to keep her stable, although some crew members argued that they should not assist a stowaway who might be carrying the disease. After doing all she could for the woman, Clemens let Toby watch over her and left the room, only to be met with protests from the rest of the crew, who argued that women on the train were the thing, not good. In the vault, the dragon's crate opens to reveal a terrifying creature examining the dirt and despairing at the sight of the missing woman. On the bridge, Olgarin kept watch, and when he used his telescope to look out at the sea, he suddenly saw the creature, but it disappeared when he put down the telescope. At this time, Clemens also saw a strange figure on the bridge. When he called Olgarin, no one answered. Clemens knocked on the wood and stepped forward, suddenly startled by Olgarin, who said there was something there. Meanwhile, the dog barks at the strange presence in the cellar. Moments later, Joseph came to examine the animals and was shocked to learn that they were all dead, including the dog. The crew met to discuss who might have done this, and when Petrovsky insisted the woman had bad luck, Clemens pointed out that the woman was too weak to move, and Wojcik reluctantly agreed. Elliot wondered if they should dock, but the crew refused because they would lose their bounty. So Elliot wondered if humans could get this animal disease, and when Clemens said no, Elliot ordered the crew to remove the meat. Petrovsky suggested that the animals looked hurt rather than sick, and he hinted that Clemens may have done so because he was the only stranger beside the girl. When Clemens tried to retaliate, Larson gave him a knife to hold him back. Olgarin ends the discussion by saying that no human does this, and that there is something evil in the ship. Meanwhile, the woman has nightmares when the creature lurks in the ship, whispering her name. Anna, the next morning the crew threw the animals off the ship, and Toby was heartbroken over the loss of his pet, and because Elliot had given him custody of the animals, but Clemens comforted him. Finally, when the storm came and the wind was very strong, the creature took advantage of the darkness to sneak around the ship. The days passed, and the crew considered the storm a bad omen. Clemens continues to take care of Anna, who momentarily begins to sober up and talk to Toby. It seems like she keeps repeating the word food. One night, Clemens couldn't sleep and ran into Joseph, who found everything too quiet. He checked all the rooms and discovered that all the rats were gone, which is not a good sign. Meanwhile, Petrovsky was monitoring the situation when he heard a strange noise. He goes to investigate and is shocked to find a hole in the bridge. Then he heard a groan, and as he continued to investigate, he suddenly discovered a sickly-looking creature crawling. 
Petrovsky drew his knife, but before he could act, the creature lunged at him and slashed his throat with its claws before sucking his blood. Seconds later, Clemens arrived at the bridge and found all signs of an attack, so he raised the alarm while the creature was in hiding. The next morning, the crew discussed the clues when they found Petrovsky's blood and knife, but not his body. They wondered if he would have fallen into the water, and Wojcik blamed Clemens, who pointed out that he would be covered in blood if he did. He also explains that all animals have bites, but is suddenly interrupted by Anna, who finally gets out of bed and says here he is, before panicking. While Clemens calmed her down, Elliot sent men to search for Petrovsky's body, but to no avail. That night, after another blood transfusion, Anna talks to Clemens and explains that she knows what causes all of this. Discovered a sickly-looking creature crawling. Petrovsky drew his knife, but before he could act, the creature lunged at him and slashed his throat with its claws before sucking his blood. Seconds later, Clemens arrived at the bridge and found all signs of an attack, so he raised the alarm while the creature was in hiding. The next morning the crew discussed the clues when they found Petrovsky's blood and knife, but not his body. They wondered if he would have fallen into the water, and Wojcik blamed Clemens who pointed out that he would be covered in blood if he did. He also explains that all animals have bites, but is suddenly interrupted by Anna, who finally gets out of bed and says, here he is, before panicking. While Clemens calmed her down, Elliot sent men to search for Petrovsky's body, but to no avail. That night, after another blood transfusion, Anna talks to Clemens and explains in her village, she lives near a castle where evil creatures reside. This monster is none other. Control the steering wheel. With great effort they try to get the ship back on track but realize that someone is missing. Clemens noticed drops of blood on Toby's body, and when he looked up he saw old Darren unconscious on the mast. Larson's body was never found. The crew used ropes to knock old Garen down, and as soon as he woke up he started screaming in pain. So they tied him to a table. In the morning, old Garen overslept, so Clemens tried her best to heal, noticing that the bites resembled animals, and that Anna as well as old Garen's body was very cold. Elliot ordered two men to keep watch at all times and search every nook and cranny of the ship, but they found nothing. A few hours later as the sun was about to set, something shook in the dragon's cage, and old Garen opened her eyes, which were now white. Meanwhile, Toby hears noises and checks the hallway, only to discover that old Garen has broken free of his restraints. Old Garen tries to catch. Toby who panics when he sees the white eyes and starts to run away. He went to the captain's residence and locked the door. Old Garen suddenly started banging with his own head until he punched a hole. All this noise was heard by the crew, which immediately ran down the stairs and began to fight Old Garen to subdue him. Entering the room, Toby was shocked to see Dracula who stood up so that others could also see him through the doorway. Dracula jumps on Toby and starts sucking his blood, but at that moment Anna appears with a gun to blow up the door lock. The crew rushes inside and finds Toby unconscious on the floor but no Dracula. Later, Clemens also transfused Toby with Elliot's blood. The crew then tied Old Garen to the ship's mast when they heard him claim that he could hear every sound of the wind, the ocean, and the sound of blood running through people's veins. At this time, the sun began to rise, and Old Garen complained of a burning sensation. When the sunlight hit his skin, it caused him excruciating pain before Wojcik shot him in the head, begging for mercy. Clemens begins to worry that Toby might encounter the same thing, so he goes to the cargo hold to open crates in search of clues. Anna went with him, and when they checked the papers, they found that the crates had no owners. They opened a bunch of them, and found only dirt, so they chased the one with the dragon symbol. They can't open it normally, but Anna discovers a hidden mechanism that can be opened. When they looked inside, they discovered that this earth was deep and had hidden a very special stick. Anna says this is where Dracula sleeps. Meanwhile, Abrams was watching when suddenly Joseph knocked him out from behind. He used a lifeboat to escape the ship but as he set sail, he began to hear creepy whispers. Since Dracula can fly, he just needs to land on the boat and attack it. At that moment, the crew heard the bell ring, but when they got up to the deck, they found only the lifeboat coming back covered in blood. The next morning, Elliot is saddened to learn that Toby is dead, and tells Wojcik that he will not be retiring anymore. The crew wrapped the boy in a bedsheet and prepared to dump his body into the sea. After Anna prays for him, Elliot suddenly tells Toby to move and unfold the paper, and he discovers that Toby is turning into a vampire. Soon, sunlight hits Toby, and Elliot burns his hand from touching him. When Toby was burned, they threw him into the sea, where he eventually died, and Elliot fell into a terrible mental state. As Demeter approached England, the crew feared what might happen if they brought Dracula with them. They decide to stand up to Dracula by knocking him down with the ship, although Wojcik is reluctant to do so as he insists the ship is his home. 
The crew then closed most of the exits, leaving only one on deck, so they could surround Dracula as night fell. Meanwhile, Elliot slowly loses his mind while keeping a diary, thinking he can hear Dracula whispering to him. When Clemens told him they would abandon the ship, Elliot refused and pulled out his gun, explaining that he thought Dracula could bring Toby back. Fortunately, Anna shows up, and by sharing her terrible experience, she convinces Elliot. In the evening, the crew prepares weapons for the arrival of Dracula while another storm hits. Suddenly, fog began to invade the ship, making it difficult for the crew to see. Hiding in the fog, Dracula flew past the crew, and before they could react, he struck Abrams on the mast, could easily strike Clemens and cause him to lose the axe, but Anna appears and fires at him. Dracula isn't annoyed, and pursues Anna next, allowing Clemens the opportunity to recover the hatchet and hit Dracula with it. Then the team attempts to take off, however Dracula recuperates rapidly and snatches Clemens by the throat. Clemens says he doesn't fear him, however, Dracula simply answers, you will. Then Anna cuts the ropes they made earlier with a knife, releasing a cut mass that falls and holds Dracula down. While the Demeter slams into the English shores, Clemens and Anna dive into the water and hold on to some debris. The crew of the lighthouse soon discovers it, but Dracula unfort could easily strike Clemens and cause him to lose the axe, but Anna appears and fires at him. Dracula isn't annoyed, and pursues Anna next, allowing Clemens the opportunity to recover the hatchet and hit Dracula with it. Then the team attempts to take off, however Dracula recuperates rapidly and snatches Clemens by the throat. Clemens says he doesn't fear him, however Dracula simply answers, you will.